Hello, everyone, and welcome to Podcast Nine and Three Quarters, a Potter podcast. I'm your host, the Half Blood Princess. In this video, I'm going to talk about some murders that were committed by the good guys in Harry Potter. But before I get started, if you love Harry Potter as much as I do, be sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. Harry Potter's wizarding world is full of heroes and villains. I'm going to go over some murders that were committed by the good guys. First, we have Severus Snape Dumbledore. It was so shocking when I read that Snape killed Dumbledore. Snape was always a character that was on the fence to me. He acted like a bad guy, but I wanted to believe he was actually a good guy. And this is the scene that cemented in my mind that Snape was actually bad. We didn't find out until later that Snape actually agreed to do this with Dumbledore himself. Albus was already on borrowed time, and knowing Draco Malfoy had been charged with the task of killing him, he instead forced Snape to do it. Next, we have Neville Longbottom and Scabier. Neville Longbottom starts off as a character you would never expect to kill anybody, but grows so much throughout the series that by the end, he's a major player on the battlefield in the Battle of Hogwarts. One of his biggest contributions is where he, with a little help from Seamus Finnegan, blows up the bridges of the school. He does this while being chased by Scabier, and while Neville is lucky to survive, the decision to blow stuff up costs the Death Eater his life. It's unclear whether the fire killed him first or the fall from such a great height. Next, Molly Weasley, Bellatrix Lestrange. Molly Weasley is a lovely yet fierce woman. Somebody you certainly wouldn't want to get on the wrong side of. And this is proven in the Deathly Hollows Part 2 when she mercilessly kills Bellatrix Lestrange. It's more fleshed out in the book with Molly engaging Lord Voldemort's most loyal lieutenant in battle after Bellatrix had fought Hermione, Ginny, and Luna. Her death in the book is actually a little less extreme with her spell just happening to hit Bellatrix in the chest rather than exploding her into ash. Next up, we have Professor Sprout killing numerous Death Eaters. Professor Sprout doesn't get much screen time throughout Harry Potter with her biggest role in the second movie, The Chamber of Secrets. We were robbed of the chance to get to witness her fighting in the Battle of Hogwarts, but in the book, it's established that she uses Devil's Snare to kill a lot of Death Eaters. And the last one I'm going to go over today happens in Cursed Child, which is pretty controversial. Some people don't think Cursed Child should be considered canon, but I'll leave that up to you guys to decide. Cedric Diggory kills Neville Longbottom. In an alternate reality, Cedric Diggory ends up living and murdering Neville Longbottom in the Battle of Hogwarts. Albus Potter and Scorpius Malfoy both go back in time in order to save Cedric's life, but their decision backfires with Cedric left humiliated in the Triwizard Tournament. He then joins the Death Eaters and kills Neville. But thankfully, Neville's death is only temporary. Albus and Scorpius eventually get things right, and Neville's life is spared. Cedric, though, does stay dead. These are just naming a few times the good guys had to kill someone. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section, and be sure to like and subscribe. Okay, love you. Bye.